Welcome people of the World Wide Web. So it's Cypher Sigma here, it's a weekend, and yes, we have the new Ghostbusters movie, Frozen Empire. So we will put the poster up there. So yes, so I recently went to see this movie. Obviously there had been a little bit of hype about it. It has been on my top 10 of movies to watch this year. Um, as it was one I saw the trailer and I, and I really liked what they did with the last one. So anybody doesn't know the overview, you have the Spenglers and Gary Guberson. Um, they have moved to New York. They are now in a firehouse as we kind of saw at the end of the first one. And they are fighting ghosts. Um, unfortunately, the mayor, so the actor returns from the first or the second Ghostbusters movie. He is still the mayor somehow 40 years or later, 30 years or later. Um, and he doesn't like the Ghostbusters particularly that much. Um, Phoebe obviously gets benched and sidelined because she is 15, um, the rest are 18, so they're able to do their jobs. Um, and that is where you kind of have the story. She kind of goes off a little bit on her own, meets a new ghost called Melody, um, and kind of builds up a friendship with her. We have the returning Ghostbusters who feature quite prominently throughout of this um, we also have new members of the team. Um, James A. Caster comes in as a scientist and they're kind of showcasing new weapons, designs, and a new facility, and there's a reason for that facility. Um, and then you kind of have um, uh, Kumal Nanjina, if I pronounce his name right, Patton Oswald, who have a small little roles that kind of pop into this one. And basically, as you see, there's this orb, um, unfortunately, there's a demon involved, he gets out and it's the Ghostbusters saving him. And very much um, kind of, I don't know, the, the first movie had very, um, Afterlife had quite a few things that were similar with the first movie. You kind of had, you know, the two demon dogs and the demon. This very much is the same, you have a painting or a relic that houses this evil demon and it's trying to get out. It kind of uses a vessel from the good guys and stuff like this. And I did notice a few things there. Um, there is a mid credit scene, it doesn't really do much for the story, it is just a, a kind of uh, fanfare, kind of given it doesn't, it's, and that is that. And it, it was alright as movies go, um, I did have a few problems with a few things and I think this is a very a busy movie and I think that is kind of part of its problem. But anyway, the spoiler review is up and let's get into this. So as I said, so the movie starts, you have the Spengler and Gary Gibson. They are fighting this dragon. Um, it's kind of, it is good because quite a few, apart from the big snowstorm, a lot of the stuff that you see is given away quite early in the movie, which is good because it gives, it gives some anticipation. Unfortunately, they do cover quite a few kind of not pivotal moments but kind of suspense moments and stuff which is, uh, didn't really work but anyway so they're fighting this dragon they get this dragon they cause a lot of damage this is where the mayor brings them in they try to object to it um as you've seen on the trailer when they have that eject motion that isn't even in the movie that was cut but featured in the trailer anyway phoebe is found to be 15 not old enough and she's basically benched um not allowed to be part of the ghostbusters and then you have kind of the family doing their own thing, fighting ghosts while the containment unit's getting cracks and obviously Ray comes across this orb that is given to him from this uh, kind of um, free-spirited, so to speak, person played by Kumail Nanjini. Um, obviously, why Phoebe goes off, she meets Melody, a ghost who kind of has passed on and they kind of build a friendship up. Trevor, he comes across Slimer and tries to trap Slimer in the roof. Uh, the parents don't really have much of, of many scenes outside of what we kind of see, uh, but we do see a lot more of um, some of the returning cast. So we had um, Lucky, so that was the girl who Trevor liked in the first one. She is now kind of an apprentice Ghostbuster. She works with James A. Caster. They've got their own kind of aquarium turned into this new facility, and this is what I liked a bit. It was good to show that there is some natural progression. Ernie Hudson keeps turning up because he kind of finances them and Ray is getting involved because podcast lives with him and they've got this kind of podcast that they do about spirits and stuff like this and this is where Ray comes across this orb. Um, obviously the orb has this demon and they all kind of figure out, they take it to the new um, new facility because the containment um, underneath the firehouse has basically got too much ghosts in it, it's been collecting ghosts for like 40 years and obviously reached their maximum. Um, 
obviously as time goes on you start to learn more about the orbs and weird stuff starts happening ray goes to an old colleague and then you kind of have a library scene and i won't mention too much about that meets pat oswald who's only really in it for one scene or a, a few scenes or a few areas of 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 the um library itself finding out what, what basically what the creature is about and the bad guy and everything else um then um phoebe does a stupid thing uh basically melody is being controlled by this kind of controlled by this demon she, um phoebe um has a spirit sucked out of her body for a period of time and then basically she opens the orb he goes on a rampage all the way to the fire station then, as we know, the original Ghostbusters are all there because we've seen the Melnitz one, which ruins a massive thing about it. I don't know why they put it in. You have like 10 Ghostbusters. You have James A. Cassidy of the original Ghostbusters. You have the old, you know, the newer Ghostbusters. You have, uh, you know, James A. Caster there. So there's like 10 of them all with proton packs, and then Phoebe kind of saves the day with a, with a little bit of ingenuity from the old ones. Um, then there is kind of a, a one thing that people, you kind of have the family coming together, which was. I really liked and it kind of felt that it was a misstep on this story um, and then they kind of go after more ghosts and stuff like this and this sets them off for the future and then you have the behind the scenes. So what did I think about this film? As I've said in the beginning bit it is a very busy movie there is so much going on you have the Spenglers and Gary Guberson so you have these four members that you really should be front and centre and should have taken the most of the screen time in my eyes like we, I know we got to see them in the first movie but this is development of those characters um, a bit like Creed the Ghostbusters old one should be featured here and there and like Billy um, Billy Bill Murray has a scene with like a flame and I thought that was brilliant. He doesn't really need to be in it too much outside of that um, because that's kind of his specialty. Janine comes very early on in the stairs. She didn't really need to be in it too much out. Ray, I was happy to have him more because obviously he's kind of the science guy um, and that. And then, oh, I can't remember. <laughs> the guy who, <laughs> Ernie Hudson's character, he um, he kind of has a go at him. There's some like the direction of him having a go at him for destroying this lion on this thing when she when Phoebe was only doing what she was like tasked to do. There were some bits like that that just didn't make sense. I said there's so much going on, so many character involvements. You know, podcast and Lucky um, get very minor roles in this, which I think they needed to step up a little bit more because this is the new generation. We should have seen the Gooberson Spengler podcast and lucky that with James A. Caster coming in with the new ones and you know showing them new weapons and maybe them giving them some new new more weapons as they go along um, and very much near the end when you have the big bad guy he goes into the firehouse and there's a kind of standoff and they win it but it's in a firehouse no one sees it and afterwards everyone's going oh my god it's the Ghostbusters they're great and I'm like no one would have seen it it's not like the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man it's not like um, a Statue of Liberty all they know is the whole thing turned to why some of them may see this character walk into the thing but even there's no footage of that and that's you know you could have had people filming it and showing that you know that, oh there's this entity it's heading for the ghostbusters warning them and stuff like this um you know there was so busy and so much going on that it lost the value of it and obviously the core elements were obviously Phoebe at the end calls Gary Gibbs and dad and I think that was really nice but it needed they needed more interaction and more story of all them interacting with each other rather than probably like 20 minutes of the two hour film that they got um I say the uh Kumail Han or whatever his name is the fire lord attendant I did not like his character at all I didn't even know why he apart from a um to be a Descendant, him the magic having fine powers and being a thing. I just I didn't gravitate to his character. I didn't really like his character. I think it was a waste of time. I think he was maybe the wrong person for this character. Um, the fact Melody is kind of in it as a kind of scapegoat, but then she gets kind of a um, research, you know, kind of a redemption at the end, which wasn't kind of clear as well. She didn't get much real time. And stuff, and I really think you know, should have had loads of bad guys, loads of creatures, and stuff like had the James Lancaster equipping with new weapons, have more battles going on, and then have the main fight with Phoebe and stuff, and then having Melody come along, um, but only using the Ghostbusters kind of in those situations and helping out, and just having it more like this is the family, this is the new Ghostbusters, these are the things, this is the new facility, 
and then you, it'll be a good springboard for the next one. But anyway, I'm going to give this a 6.2 out of 10. That has been my review for Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. What are your views and thoughts? Let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, I've been Cypher Signal Screen Time, and I shall see you in the next one.